Early hockey pucks were made of wood. But for informal games, even objects like stones would suffice. Eventually, rubber became the puck material of choice. The modern puck is 3 inches wide by 1 inch thick. Pucks are usually frozen before games to reduce their bounce on the ice. Eleven different ingredients go into making these rubber hockey pucks. The recipe begins with natural rubber. Two types of oil make the rubber durable. Certain minerals act as curing agents and anti-aging agents. And a form of coal dust called carbon black serves as a filler. Workers feed the ingredients into a preliminary mixer. First, the slabs of natural rubber. Then, antioxidants to lengthen the rubber's lifespan. Then, one type of oil to help blend in the dry chemicals. Then, another type to refine the rubber's rigidity level. Then, additives such as calcium carbonate and sulfur to help cure the rubber during the molding process. And finally, the carbon black filler. After 10 to 15 minutes of this preliminary blending, the mixture goes down a chute and onto a conveyor belt, which transports it to a machine called the mill mixer. It will perform the final mix. At this point, workers add more natural rubber. Then they add another harder rubber that will make the hockey pucks more resilient. The recipe is formulated to produce a very hard rubber, one that can stand up to the rigors of repeated blows from a hockey stick. It's critical that the ingredients blend evenly. That's why workers continually cut the rubber while it's mixing. In the company lab, technicians evaluate a sample from each batch. This device is called a rheometer. It analyzes what's called the curing curve, how the rubber hardens and to what degree. A computer compares the curing curve to the quality model. If they match, the batch gets the go-ahead. The rubber hasn't yet gone through the curing process, so it's still malleable. An extrusion machine squeezes it through a round die. This produces logs about 40 inches long and 3 inches wide. The exact diameter of the hockey puck. The next machine slices each log like a loaf of bread into 39 pieces. Each piece is 1.1 inches thick. These pieces are called preforms because at this stage they're not quite fully formed pucks. Workers put them into compression molds that look like giant muffin pans. Each mold cavity is the exact size of the finished hockey puck. A cover goes on, then the molds go into a curing press, which compresses the preforms and heats them to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It takes 18 minutes for the rubber to cure. The preforms come out as hockey pucks, rock hard and an eighth of an inch thinner than before. They cool for 24 hours. During the compression phase, excess rubber oozed out and stuck to the pucks, so workers run each and every puck manually through a trimming machine. There's excess rubber stuck to the molds as well. The factory scrapes it off, grinds it up, and uses it as filler in subsequent batches. The mold embedded a dimple pattern on the puck's edge. This texture creates friction between the puck and hockey stick. The more friction, the better stick handling, and the greater control the players have.